All right, Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Hope everyone's having a uh, fantastic Friday evening. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do part four of the, uh, what I call, epic mail order coin collection from the mid-2000s. Uh, we got some pretty good stuff here, along with, uh, again, a, a little bit of a PSA uh, on one of our mail order companies that we all know and love and i'm saying that extremely sarcastically at this point um because how much more of a meme does it have to be right so um yeah let's go ahead and dive right in so uh you guys have seen these um we have a number of them here uh, to kind of save on time i'll show you guys one and hopefully just describe what else we have in there but these are worth probably pretty close to face value but these are um, three different sets of presidential dollar coins. So there is a uh, True Blue 2008 Uncirculated Edition coin set. Okay, you're going to learn what True Blue means here in a moment. We also have the Platinum Edition of the same date, same four coins. And then we also have a Gold Edition of this. Okay, again, this is a pure travesty that these things were going on. Uh, 15 years ago, but you know, it was kind of like the progressive thing with these mail order catalogs and TV shows and things like that. It's like, man, they got a um, gold plate everything, you know, from state quarters to these things. All right, so what we have here um, are let's see, these are the uh, John Quincy Adams presidential dollar series of coins. There's Philadelphia, there's a Denver. And these are just the regular uncirculated, okay? These haven't been plated or any of that stuff. Um, they, they put them in these fancy holders uh, to kind of give you that peace of mind that you're getting a true collectible. You know, they, they throw in this, this printed fabricated, you know, coin shopping network, by the way, is who it is. Certificate of authenticity, just letting you know that this thing is authentic and it's awesome. And, you know, you could retire from it in about 400 years. So um, there's one for each set. And uh, this particular one, again, John Quincy Adams. This might have been the same one I showed you guys. The Platinum Edition. Okay, this one will break your heart. They had a company that actually platinum plated the coins. Yes, you heard that right. See how lighter some of these are? This one has a funky toning on it. See how white this one is? Pretty piss poor job, by the way. Again, certificate of authenticity. Guarantees nothing, ladies and gentlemen. But this is, again, some of the things that was going on 15 years ago. Um, back when, you know, these companies had free reign of everything. And here are the gold-plated versions don't let these fool you they look like regular standard uncirculated coins but these are gold edition gold plated however you want to call it all right they're a little bit more yellow more gold than the regular business strike coins that are just uncirculated again with their useless certificate of authenticity now uh i am going to be quoting these as face value for each one of them um so for every pack this is $6 worth. It doesn't seem like a whole lot, but, you know, it, I would say that, that our customer here, um, they, their dad had um, actually bought a, little, a lot of great stuff. I would say probably, again, about 80% of everything that he had purchased all went up in value with exception of this and any of the other kind of like modern coins. Now you'll see on the edge of the box, it says John Quincy Adams, 2008 dollar mania was the program. Uh, here's some more here with an invoice. I'm gonna go ahead and take the invoice out, but show you guys these here. So we got the 2007 John Adams set. George Washington set, which was the first one. I believe this is one, number two. We also had uh, Thomas Jefferson in there as well. One of each. PND Mint. Both in there. You know, it looks almost like legit U.S. Mint packaging from the day. I'll be honest with you. It's, it fools you, right? The same way that, you know, these, these uh, companies that want to send you, like, refinance paperwork to refinance their home, they put it in, like, a, 
a type of envelope to make it look like it's coming from the IRS. It, it's funny. <laughs> See that all the time. I'm like, we don't need to refinance our house. Are you kidding me? All right, so we got that one there. Uh, this one here is James Monroe, 2008. And then finally, we have this one here. 2007 Dollar Mania, James Madison. Um, Price-wise... Here's how much was paid for a set, I suppose. 2007 set, George Washington's, Adams, Thomas Jefferson, gold-plated, 80 bucks. What a rip-off, man. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to tell my client that these are only worth face value because when you do that sort of thing, it destroys the value, all right? So we have that, all right? So uh, before we get into the, the best part of the bunch, which is going to be in these bags over here, it's just loads of silver. All right, we have some stuff from our good old friends at Littleton Coin Company. Now, I will say this, Littleton Coin Company has been around for a long time, okay? They're located in, where is it, New Hampshire? New Hampshire, Littleton, New Hampshire, of course. Um, and they are personally responsible for bringing an influx of new collectors into the hobby, okay? So I'll give them that. But I just want to say this, that, that they are going to push and push and push, all right? And um, kind of play off the, the gam gambler's fallacy with people. Um, when it comes to the stuff that they're selling, okay, they send you this, these items and, and they, they're asking for very inflated prices for them, okay? They, that's their coins on demand service. Now, the first item that we'll take a look here is neither a coin, uh, but it is a really cool um, uh, Confederate States uh, piece of paper currency right here. So that's a Confederate States currency piece. Um, it's in generally pretty nice shape, but I can tell you this, this is the mo most common one out of all of it. Uh, so uh, it's a $10 face value, uh, was used, I guess, in the Deep South during the Civil War. So pretty neat, still good looking notes. Uh, they have some value. Uh, there are different types of Confederate notes that have a lot of value because they're just that more rare. Uh, but this is a pretty neat note and kind of hard to believe that, uh, you know, um, Littleton Coin was actually serving up currency that looked like this. So that's what that looks like right there. Crisp, unused. So um, they call that a remainder, but obviously a remainder wouldn't have signatures and stuff on there. It would be, and back in the day, I'll show this to you. Back in the day, they used to handwrite serial numbers on them. So um, I consider that a fancy, I guess, 18818 binary, uh, five digit. You know, it's really not anything super special, but um, yeah, with the remainders, they're unused, they're crisp, uncirculated, but they won't have any writing on it. No signatures, no serial number. Um, and that's that. So uh, each one of these bags is... Um, See, these are all Littleton, Littleton stuff here. So we'll go through these about as quick as I can. Um, uh, let's see here. Let me uh, show you a little bit about the price paid. Now there's other items on here as well, but there's your, uh, see the T68.UU uh, line there, 1864 $10 Confederate note, crisp unused. $120 is what that one was paid. Um, so, but go ahead and take a look at all the other stuff in there. So, uh, and some of this stuff we actually saw in the bin uh, when, when we did that kickoff video. Um, like the 2x2 two two storage box, uh, which I'm probably going to end up using um, for some of the um, inventory. Uh, single airtight holder, you know, 950, 950. It's like all, you know, regular, regular stuff that's, you know... Um, that's okay. It's not, it's not overpriced or, you know, what have you. Uh, the next one that we have here is going to be Alright, so, uh, you guys remember these, um, plastic 
packs here that hold the coins that Littleton used. So we have, uh, this one is a 2002 with a little toning spot right on there. Uh, so Littleton used to send out a bunch of Silver Eagles back when people were starting out with the coins program, the um, coins on demand program. So if, you, if you're thinking about going into it, number one, you're gonna be paying quite a bit of money for the program. And number two, they're always gonna start you out with a Silver Eagle um, on your upgrade. So after they sent you their, their weak little kind of like first, first go around of the uh, coins on demand, program which is usually like a very worn out indian head scent you know buffalo nickel also pretty worn out and a few other things they're they're going to upgrade you to things like this on your next shipment so um but your selection of coins on approval is enclosed so this this is actually an envelope the coin would be in here you'll take it out of this pouch you go ahead and examine it uh they'll then send you a invoice if you wanted to keep it like for example this is what they send you for the 2002 silver eagle um so i guess i guess it's kind of like the the kickoff um um shipment that they send you because in the beginning they also send you free albums but it's like the probably the least useful albums, you know, the Susan B. Anthony album <laughs> it has like four dates in it and not been, not a lot of people use it. Um, it's kind of weak in retrospect. And then there's a Silver Eagle album uh, to get you started with your first Silver Eagle coin in there. Uh, but take a look at this. Uh, 2007, $38.75 is a lot of money. All right. In 2007, that really should have been probably like Ooh, like maybe $22, uh, price of silver in 07 was, I'd have to say like 1750 ish, $18. And it kind of fluctuated up and down, you know, plus or minus a dollar. It really didn't move all that much until the next year. So 38.75, way expensive back in the day, but in today's money for a silver Eagle, that's pretty gosh darn close. So if you're going to do this program with Littleton today, this Silver Eagle or one like it, just a different date, will probably end up being a line item that's going to be more closer to $60 than it will be uh, $38.75. So that's how that works. If you agree to it, um, you just uh, you clip off a portion of the form and you send it back with your payment. You know, oftentimes you can... Um, drop something. Oftentimes you can uh, send off uh, like a personal check or call in a credit card. And if you wanted to return your coins back, they give you this, um, the material is Tyvek. Okay, this is uh, kind of like um, the material we used to use when I worked at a transportation company for sending back documents. It's very sturdy, but it's flimsy thin. It won't tear very easily. And then plus they also have other things here, collector's corner, you know, newsletter, doodad, um, you know, wish list. What kind of coin types do you want to see on your uh, future coins on demand um, uh, shipments, you know, and then they'll consider that in there as well. Uh, they also have other things they do sell. Okay, so they try and upsell you on some other items in there. Again, this is all pricing from about 2007. They love their print media. They even do um, world worldwide currency. Uh, that's the envelope there for sending your payment. All right, so that's what you'd use if you're sending. If you're old school, and of course in 2007 there were still a lot of people that were doing the personal check thing or money order. Um, but yeah, more more um, collateral here. Um, there's even stuff for stamps, silver dollars, an easy, affordable way to assemble a collection of America's favorite dollars is not with Littleton. Oh, I just want to make that per perfectly clear. All right. So that's what that looks like. Sorry, I wasted your guys' time going through all that stuff. But yeah, that is a, a standard packet that they used to send folks on the first debut um, Coins on Demand 
uh, shipment. All right, so in this case, it was uh, the Silver Eagle right here. So that's, uh, again, something normal that they did. Um, but fortunately, we're not too far off on this price-wise compared to what the original owner paid for it. So that, that's really good news. Um, so uh, here's another one right here. This is the 2005 Silver Eagle. Uh, again, with all the collateral that's in there. This one here is uh, 2007. It's flipped around. I mean, if you want me to flip it around for you so that way you guys can look at it to do that. There you go, 2007 Silver Eagle. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of these plastic flip container things that are just cheap. But again, that, that kind of shows you that they, go, that they send out large volumes of these things now here's something that's just a shade different there's not only a silver eagle in here but also one other coin a um, bicentennial ike dollar with type type 2 reverse so it's got the, the thinner um, lettering on the back and we also have here a 2006 silver eagle all right, so they really love their Silver Eagle program. They, they take pride in it, as a matter of fact. I was going to do a sampler Littleton um, submission that will span 12 months, but due to popular demand, everybody said, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it, Benny. Don't do it. Uh, so we got one more here, and uh, this one is another Silver Eagle. This time we have a 2004. All right, so... They give you as many dates as they can, so that way you can get started on that album. When you have the album and you're putting in these Silver Eagles in there, it's kind of a psychology play for Littleton. It's damn smart. They, they're, they're making you assume ownership of the collecting experience when they send you these things and kind of forcing you to put them in the album. So call it savvy, smart. You know, whatever you want to play it or spin it as, that's exactly what they're using. All right, so um, we have a couple bags of silver. Okay, so we got a nice little pile of silver here. Uh, I don't know if I've shown you one of these. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Uh, oh, I can tell you this right now, I haven't. So we have, for this first bag, we have a roll of... More Walking Liberty half dollars. Uh, these all appear to be pretty well circulated, if not cleaned, like some of the other ones that we've seen. So yeah, they, they're they're not anything spectacular from a collectible standpoint. Um, it, I mean, if you if time permits, you know, this is not my collection. I might take a look and see if there's like varieties or something in there. But, uh, you know, you probably want to look for some sort of double die. Like on the 42, there's a DDR. 46 has a really big DDR as well. So a 42P like that might be a DDR. You didn't never know. So that'll turn a, one of these coins into about a $60 bill. Now that's a good looking 40 right there. Okay. 40S, it looks like. So San Francisco minted example. Uh, this one's not too bad either. 41 S a little bit tougher date for the strike. That one has a pretty, pretty marshmallowy strike there. Uh, but there you go. 43, 45, 1940s, always common date, uh, 44, 45. Um, and that, that's for all mint marks, you know? So 45, 46, that's actually a 46 right there. So again, that's a date that you'll want to flip over and actually take a close look to see if it's that that uh, popular double die reverse. A couple 42s, a 43 in there, and then another 46. And uh, that's also a Philly. So uh, pretty nice group right there. We'll talk a little bit about, uh, there is an invoice uh, on how much this, this was um, bought for. Uh, again, it looks like uh, Celebrity Shopping Network, CSN. But all this time, I thought it was Coin Shopping Network, but it was Celebrity Shopping Network. I don't remember them. Of course, it sounds like they were very popular around 2007 and 2008. 
All right, and then this other roll right here is going to be what looks to be quarters. And sure enough, we have a bunch of 90% silver quarters. Uh, from the looks of things, it looks like a lot of Standing Liberties in there. So a lot of Type 2. That's with the, the three stars under the eagle. So it's probably, probably exactly what that is. And they probably have dates on them. Uh, like that one there is a 25, 25P, it looks like. Yep, 25P. But as you can see, just a random kind of like uh, just circulated mix of Standing Liberties. Um, if they all have dates, that would be kind of cool, you know. So 27. The mint mark is on the obverse right next to the date. There's 29. 29, 30, 26. All right, looks to be a lot of Philadelphia's in here. Uh, 26, 30, it's a 28 there, 29, 27. If the 27 had an S mint mark, now we'd be talking, might be like a $200 coin, 26, but you get the, you get the big idea. Without me going uh, too far, too far into that roll, um, Nothing wrong with a little bit of constitutional silver, right guys? So um, yeah, our uh, collector did right in buying all this silver. Um, we do have one more part to the collection, which I will do probably on Monday to wrap that up. And then we'll, we'll kind of uh, go over my process of um, the appraisal and showing you guys the spreadsheet and all that great stuff. Uh, so here is how much was paid for the stuff we just looked at. So the full roll of Walking Liberty half dollars, which they were classifying as about uncirculated, $349, which seems like a lot. It does sound like a lot. Let me think. Which means each coin, each coin has to be... The calculator in my head's not working too well. Um, Seventeen dollars—that's a lot. All right, uh, so we have a roll of forty full date Standing Liberty quarters for two hundred eighty-nine dollars. So um, there you go, six hundred bones on some silver. Now um, there is a little bit of a premium on things like. Uh, things like silver that's in pretty nice shape like that, like AU. They don't appear to be clean. They just appear to have a little bit of circulation wear, uh, which, you know, could take it. And then we're going to wrap it up with a really nice Morgan Dollar roll here. Uh, we do have four miscellaneous rolls of other stuff, including, um, now that one's sealed, but that's 90% silver dimes. So we got two rolls of 90% silver dimes, which uh, constitutes $10 face value. And these all appear to be uh, Merc dimes. So Mercury dimes in there. So you just all Mercury dimes. So Mercury dimes, mixed dates. Uh, I don't want to go through and actually, you know, kind of tally up, you know, uh, what dates and stuff we have in there. If there's anything substantial, I'll let you guys know in the part five video, because uh, I'm going to start working on the... The thing on that one so we have a sealed roll i'm not gonna open that up uh but that's a sealed five dollar face face value roll of mercury dimes we also have two rolls of what looks to be um full date buffalo nickels let's go ahead and take a few out here so 37 35 36 35 34, so uh, all common date stuff, 1930 stuff, very common, all right? So there's two full rolls there of the um, Buffalo Nickels also in there, but let's go ahead and wrap up this video and take a look at this roll of uh, Morgan Dollars, all right, which is pretty nice. Uh, I actually snuck a peek at all the coins, and they all look really nice, too. So, um, actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it back the way it went in. So, we're going to start it out in reverse here. 
All right, so uh, we have a 1881. All right, this one is an S. All right, one, one of the more common dates of Morgan dollars. So 1881S. This one's pretty. Uh, 1882. These are probably all mint state 62, 63. Uh, so we got 82S Morgan right there. Beautiful looking luster as well. Uh, looks like we got 1885. Oh, oh no. 1885O. Beautiful, beautiful looking coin. So I got two different light sources. The one on the left has a little bit of a gold to, uh, hue to it. The ring light has more of a bright, kind of like natural white. Or not so, this is natural white. This is more kind of like that hyper, hyper white. All right, so this is an O, 1885O. We have a good looking 1884. This one is an O as well. Time to do a little VAM hunting, huh? See if there's anything uh, crazy in there as far as varieties is concerned. You know, so certain varieties will uh, bump up the actual value of these things quite a bit. So let's see, 1898, that's a non traditional date. Uh, o. Thought it would be a no. I have one of these myself, 181890. Oh. So they're they're all common dates, but they're all quite nice. They're all pretty. Uh, here is an 1889. I doubt we'll see a CC mint mark on the back. No, it's Philadelphia. So 1889, Philadelphia. All right, we're getting close to the more tougher dates. All right. Is this a 1893S? No, but it's a 83. Oh, good looking coin there. Yeah, these are all mint state. This one is 1885. All right. See, what's really cool, because I got to separate this collection out, uh, divided by uh, four, so there's four people that's going to receive a piece of this collection. You know, there's 20 Morgan dollars, you know, it's going to be five Morgan dollars for each, each person in the family. So they'll, they'll get to keep, you know, uh, a few of these, which is nice. I, I like that kind of split. Here's an 1890P. And we also have an 1899. This is probably a no, right? Yep, with some pretty nice around the horn die cracks. You see that going all the way around the letters, da -da 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 -da, all the way around. Beautiful looking coin, a little bit of a die clash too. So 1899-0, another, another really nice common date there. And 1897, Philadelphia. Solid. Eighteen ninety six. What I like about this is they're all different dates. If you wanted to, you could put to put yourself together a really nice little album. You know, buy buy a Morgan Dollar album that has no dates in it and just write in your own. These coins are all really nice. Here's a good date right here, eighteen eighty eight. Now, is this a P D or an S? It's a Philadelphia. An S mint mark would be extra special for this 1888, but that's a good date right there. All right, we have 1887, Philadelphia. All right, not the greatest looking one, still still mint state, but you know that that chatter right there in front of uh, Lady Liberty's face is kind of distracting. Um, here's the 1886 Beauty. 
Philadelphia. A little bit of a rim bump there on the edge. But that's okay. Still a good looking coin. Here is a 1900. Probably another O mint mark. And it is. A common date. More common than Philadelphia. All right, a few more coins and we are done, ladies and gentlemen. And here's another 1900. P. All right, good looking coin. Here is the 1902. O as well. Another stunner. Okay, this one has a little bit of a toned edge to it, but this one is an 1889 P. I think this is our second 1889 P in this roll. Because I made that joke. I'm like, it'd be great if there was a Carson City mid mark on the back. You know how big that would be in that condition? And we're going to wrap it up with a 1901. All right. Oh, it sure is. 1901. Oh, wow. What a great way to end up this video. So we do have a part five that's going to be coming up here after the weekend. Uh, and that's going to go ahead and do it. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in on this. Hopefully you guys got a little bit of a uh, learning lesson with the whole Littleton coin thing. Because, um, yeah, you don't need to... Go down that rabbit hole, um, you're going to end up pissing away your money if you did. Uh, just trying to get into the hobby. There are better ways to uh, to pick up some of these, like the Silver Eagles and all that. Um, just by going to a coin shop. You know, you're going to be getting it at a reasonable rate there. But um, that's it, guys. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Appreciate your guys' time. Have a wonderful evening. Have a great weekend. And I will see you on the next coin video. So long.